MSA has launched the Socialist Revolutionary Workers Party. Its national convener, Ivan Jim, says the party aims to unite workers. It's still considering if it will contest the 2019 national elections. Well, ENC has Govan Whittles attended the launch and joins us now. It looks like we're going to be spoiled for choice. I mean, only yesterday we had the African content movement. We had Patricia Dilly launching her party um, uh, the other week. What's uh, NUMSA up to? Yeah, that's about three political parties in one month. Certainly a Christmas present for South African politics. But NUMSA is fulfilling a five-year plan. Remember that NUMSA fell out with the ANC. In 2013, that historic meeting, um, one of their leaders got up and, and said President Jacob Zuma should resign. From there, they said we are no longer supporting the ANC. That led went to them. Downhill, they were went kicked downhill. Went downhill. Out of Kosatu. And they vowed to form a workers' party. And today in Boxburg, that finally happened. Uh, the pre-launch was there. We had close to a thousand delegates and these are basically among them you would find NUMSA members, members of SAFTU's affiliates such as FAO, uh, SAPU Union, the uh, ETM, the Transport Union, um, but you would also find civic society uh, members there, so members who are part of different residence associations from Abatlali Masun Jondondo in, in the KwaZulu Natal. Um, so it's a whole host of everyone that NUMSA is trying to be or has, has mobilized over the last four years that have finally come together and they form this interest interim leadership and uh, interim structure, which is the Socialist Revolutionary um, Workers' Party. Who is in this interim structure? Right, so the leadership is quite complicated. The national convener, as you've mentioned, is Ivan Jim. He's also the general secretary of NUMSA. But then in the National Working Committee of the uh, SR um, um, WM, you have leaders of SAFTU. The SAFTU president is in there. The deputy president is in there. The deputy general secretary. You also have different uh, civic society uh, leaders that are in their residence associations. So at this, at this point, it's a melting pot of everyone that has been by NUMSA side since they were expelled. But I did get a chance to speak to Ivan Jim um, just shortly before the, the actual pre-launch started. And the question was whether he thinks he could be NUMSA general secretary and be the leader of a political party at the same time. Let's have a look at what he said. I have been an activist for the rest of my life. If you were to know, I have led NUMSA for years. I was the provincial state deputy secretary of the SACP. I led the ANC at the regional level for many years. And therefore, there's no contradiction for me to hold the position in continuing to do my work in NUMSA, where I'm employed, and to continue to be an active leader in the SRWP. Oh, that's interesting. So it's going to hold both roles. Well, and he's going to campaign for the elections while, of course, still leading the plastic strikes and the strike at SAA that's coming up as well. Um, so he says that he'll be running workers' campaigns and running political campaigns both at the same time. Not sure how that's going to work out. But now, I mean, if the softer president is part of this interim leadership structure, uh, what does it mean for the rest of SAFTA? Because I do remember that uh, when in the run-up to its to SAFTA's formation, they did say, in fact, a lot of them said that they had bent their fingers. So um, right now, they were no longer interested in endorsing you know, political parties. So how does that measure up with what seems to have happened? Or maybe the question should be, has SAFTU, you know, as a union federation, thrown its weight behind this initiative? Well, they can't. That's because the SAFTU National, or the founding Congress of SAFTU, decided that the federation would be independent from any political party. And if you, if you remember, the reason why SAFTU is the second biggest worker federation in the country with 750,000 workers is because it promised its affiliates that it would not um, be allied to any political party. Of course, this has created an awkward problem because the SAFTU's top leadership are now in the National Working Committee of this new uh, Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party. But when confronted on it, they're saying that we've joined this organization in our personal capacities. And they believe that even though they're leading South Africa's second biggest trade union federation, they won't confuse their members when they're appearing as, as office bearers of the Socialist Revolutionary Workers' Party. Uh, that, that sounds problematic. So, Mavavi, was he there? 
Zelensky Mavavi was not there yesterday. He promised that he would be there. Remember, they had that press conference about mm -hmm. uh, about Softus big. That's quite that telling, isn't it? Yeah, he did. Uh, no, I mean the, for the launch of such a big initiative, and considering the central role that uh, Numsa, um, you know, played in the formation of this new um, federation, and how, as some people have said, it has bankrolled a lot of these leaders and uh, uh, very specific initiatives. It does look like it's quite a snap because even at a solidarity level, I mean, one would have thought that a Israeli Zimavavi would would be there. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Saftu was invited officially, so he could have easily appeared and said it's on the basis of the invitation. But more so because after Zuelin Zimavavi was dismissed from Kosatu, he was employed as a shop steward by NUMSA. So he owes his political survival to NUMSA. And they went on to fund the majority of Saftu's formation. But I did ask the president of Saftu, Mac Chavalala, where Mr. Vavi was. He said that, yes, he knows he promised he was going to be here, but he had other organizational matters to, to deal with today. I I think there's something worth reading into there. Um, remember that the official launch, the big one with all the communities of this Workers' Party is happening next year in January. So that would really be the test to see whether or not Mr. Vavi in fact supports the Workers' Party. Something, something doesn't add up there, no doubt about that. One last one, uh, Govan, before I let you go. I don't know what uh, uh, Evan Jim said there, but he always prides himself as someone who, you know, studies, reads the situation. His analysis um, is uh, usually um, good. But if one looks at the record of workers' parties here in South Africa, they don't have a particularly proud one. Did he sort of give um, those people who were gathered there any sense at, as to what it is they are going to do differently, number one, and why they think they'll be different from anything that has existed before, which, as I say, uh, really wasn't none of them were actually any successful. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ivan Jim in that case saying that he believes the working class has been demobilized and he said that that was because even though they came into the 2009 Jacob Zuma presidency um, with a lot of hope believing that he would mobilize for the workers, what they found instead was a reluctance by the ANC to adopt NUMSA's policy position specifically towards the nationalization of the economy. But you're right, uh, the workers' parties in South Africa have a very bad track record. The last contest by a workers' party for national elections was in 2014. The Workers and Socialist Party, led by one of the activists, Mamet and they failed to secure even one seat. Then we had NUMSA's own United Front 2016 with a very poor showing, less than 10 councillors across the countries that managed to get into councils. Ivan Jim saying this time he thinks they've learned the lesson from the United Front. They've absorbed everyone in the United Front that, weren't, that wasn't able to secure a position in 2016 and they're workshopping them now, obviously through the political school, hoping that they'd be able to present a different offering or better offering uh, before next year's elections which they do want to contest. Well, we will see. Govan, thanks very much. Govan Rituals, who 